And that was the position at the close of play with the West Indies total of 269 for two, probably meaning that the extent of England's ambitions in this match will be merely to save it. Uber and batting yesterday had set up the West Indies for a big total. Today, though, he didn't last long, an incautious swipe at Embury out for 160. Then, with an ominous spring in his toes, came Viv Richards. The inevitable barrage began. This six was a danger to the grandstand windows. And this one was even bigger. In danger this time, the Caribbean shipping lanes. Then Gower took the new ball, gave it to Thomas, and everything turned England's way. Gomes gone for 33. And next, Thomas claimed the prize scalp. Richards caught by an acrobatic Downton for 51, the first ball after lunch. Now Botham was bowling with the belligerent bounce of old. Dujon took up the challenge. And substitute fieldsman Slack took the catch of the match so far. The sunburn was temporarily forgotten. Michael Holding tried the same thing, and his went many a mile. But this was an afternoon when England had the West Indies where they seldom are. On the rack, holding out for 23. Then Best and Marshall contrived to finish at one end of the wicket, while the ball was at the other. Neil Foster ran in to trap Carlisle Best. And Greg Thomas, bowling with genuine pace, finished off the West Indians. His fourth wicket of the innings, England had hit back when least expected. England desperately needed a good start with the bat. But Robinson fell to Marshall's bouncer for three. Though the West Indies' pace attack was hotting up, Gooch was looking in confident mood. They met the predictable attack of bouncers. But Gooch and Gower saw England pass 50, and the important thing now is that they bat as long as they possibly can. And as you join us, spell.